A combination of oceans, prevailing winds, and land formations like mountains are fundamental to weather conditions like monsoons and rain shadows. In the Himalayas and some other mountainous regions, these factors can bind together in driving the weather in something called orographic precipitation, where orology is the study of mountains. What is this type of precipitation? How did it occur? And what are the consequences? Well, we take the easy example of India and the Himalayas. Now, India has to the south a large body of warm water, the Indian Ocean, which stretches all the way down to the Antarctic, bounded on one side by Australia and on the other by Africa. Now, due to India's location near the equator, the water around its coastline is warm, as is the air above it. This warm air is fairly well saturated with water evaporated off from the top of the Indian Ocean. The winds that blow across the ocean reverse direction at different times of the year, and that during part of the year, winds blow from across the oceans onto the landmass of India, then up onto the Himalayas. This change in direction of the wind has a radical effect on the weather of the entire region. And one of the driving forces of this change is the Tibetan Plateau. It is a large area of relatively flat land at high altitude north of the Himalayas. This area warms up, so does the air above it warms also fairly rapidly. And this air is heated takes up a greater volume for the same mass. The warm air is lighter than the cool air. It also means the warm air rises fairly rapidly above the large area of the Tibetan Plateau. The result, air is pulled in from the surrounding areas to replace the rising air. A large proportion of this air comes from India, resulting in the general northwards movement of the air, pulling in the moist air from the Indian Ocean. Now, as this warm, moist air moves across India, then poured into the base of the Himalayas. As a result, it's forced upwards. As this warm air rises, it starts to cool. In the height of the Himalayas, the air has to rise by a very significant amount to make it to the Tibetan Plateau beyond. As this humid air cools, the cold air can hold less water vapour suspended within it. As a result, water condenses out of the air to form clouds. However, Due to both the height and the length of the Himalayas, and also due to the fact that the air continues to be heated on the Tibetan Plateau, these clouds are not small, isolated rain, cloud, rain clouds or even a brief storm. Instead, what you get is an extended period of very heavy rain over a substantial portion of the Indian subcontinent for a period of months, what is known as the monsoons. Substantial rain falls both on the western coast of India, where the air generally first makes landfall, then in the foothills of the Himalayas, which is added to by water running off the higher levels and causing severe flooding in places. However, this isn't the end of the weather pattern. And once the air has passed over the Himalayas, now cooled significantly, it's lost a lot of the moisture it was once carrying. As it makes its way to the Tibetan Plateau, no longer being forced higher due to the topography of the land, since it's already passed the highest mountains in the world. It means result, the moisture isn't being forced out of the air to form more clouds. Indeed, once the air drops down slightly to the Tibetan Plateau, it's then warmed up again, and actually hold more water vapour than it did when crossing the Himalayas earlier, and the clouds are almost impossible to form from this air. It results in what's known as a rain shadow. On the southern slopes of the Himalayas, there's some of the heaviest rainfalls, yet on the northern side, virtually no rain forms at this time of the year, and what water is present is fairly rapidly evaporated. So that's what orographic precipitation does, how the mountains drive weather patterns for that area of land.